Good afternoon again, people, or good morning. <laughs> Watch from at 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you a, a verse of scripture. I just got some news from War News. So I'm going to give you a verse of scripture again out of Romans 15 and 13. And it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is great, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in his blood and accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you're justified by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time. You're protected by the blood of Jesus and you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, teach you if you let him. There is not one cloud in the sky here. The sun is out and there is a shifting going on in the spirit. I don't know whether anybody else can feel it, but there is a heaviness. Um, I've had, I had a friend of mine call me, he said he's been up since 2.30. I was restless all night. There, there is definitely something in the spirit with this thing. So, you know, uh, nothing might not happen today. It might not. But there is definitely something going on in the spirit. You can't help but to feel that. You can't help but to feel it. I can feel it. Other people are reporting to me, emailing me that they sense something. Animals are going crazy. The cats are going nuts when usually they're sleeping at this time of day. So let me give you this news off of war news. Um, Israel, is, the title, it says Israel trapped. So it's saying here that a ceasefire or an all-out war is Iran's ultimatum. So U.S. is shifting U.S. is stifling pressure on Netanyahu to stop this thing. Which is not going to happen. So, Iran delivered an ultimatum to the U.S. demanding the immediate withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza. This is another reason when I saw this, there was another reason why everything in the spirit is happening right now. You can't help, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sensing this. The immediate withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza and a ceasefire. In return, Iran will not strike Israel directly, which could lead to a generalized conflict in the region. So in other words, if they don't do this, if, if, if the U.S. don't push Israel to stop this war, Iran won't. Iran will directly hit them. No one knows yet what Israel's response will be. Yes, we do. We know what Israel's response is going to be, and it's going to be kiss my you-know-what. That's, that's exactly what they're going to do. No one knows what Israel's response will be. If it does, it will be and is defeat. Netanyahu is already receiving fierce attacks from Israeli analysts and political opponents who are calling for his immediate removal. Now, <laughs> God is still in control. Okay, regardless of what they're saying, regardless of what they're doing, Iran will be leveled. Iran will be leveled. Israel does have a choice of using the Samson option, and I don't mean the cat. I mean nukes, if they will. God only knows what's going to happen with this, but there will be a war, definitely. So the withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza has angered 
many Israelis as objectives of the months long operation has not been achieved. That's when I said what I said. Something else is going on. It's not just Rafa. It's not just them getting prepared for Rafa, but when they withdrew those troops from certain parts of Gaza, something else is happening right now. And like I said yesterday earlier, they could be getting prepared for war with Iran. It is safe to say that Netanyahu's decision to hit the Iranian embassy sealed it. Number one, the U.S. is pressuring him to agree. They have mobilized all diplomatic channels so that Iran does not launch an attack which will open the Aeolian gap in the Middle East. Number two, the Biden administration definitely wants a ceasefire in Gaza because of the U.S. election. Number three, an Israel-Iran war is something Americans don't want. Number four, if Iran secures a ceasefire in Gaza and a truce, it will be a winner in many ways. Number five, dissatisfaction within Israel's Israel against Netanyahu is increasing dramatically, whatever choice he makes, which is true. I mean, it don't matter what he does at this point. So, it says IDF prepares for a war on the border with Lebanon, agony over Netanyahu's move. So, however, the fact that Israel has mobilized its army on the border with Lebanon since last night shows that Netanyahu and his staff are still expanding the war. They're not going to stop this. Now, they have to regroup and think about how they're going to handle Iran. Because once Iran gets involved in this, Russia's going to get involved in this. And Russia is now test firing a missile from North Korea. So you probably might have none other than the quiet China getting involved in this as well. So this thing will start an all out war. Definitely. Funny that this came out today at this time. So the IDF announced at the start of a major exercise. Here we go again with that word exercise. Today in the Western Galilee region and the Northwest coast of Israel to prepare for fighting on multiple fronts. Again, that could be why they pulled some of those troops from Gaza because they're preparing to fight on multiple levels, including in South Lebanon. Personnel and equipment from the IDF Northern Command, Interior Command, Navy, Air Force, Police, Fire, Rescue Services, and Megan David Adam are being mobilized for this exercise. This is not an exercise. The municipality of, um, I think it's Tarshia, informed residents about the exercise, noting that the Exercise is part of improving emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. The Jerusalem Post confirmed this morning that the Israeli military is conducting a major exercise in northern Israel to prepare for battles on different fronts, including Hezbollah and Iranian retaliation against northern Israel. New Israeli military reinforcements have arrived on the northern front with southern Lebanon. The reinforcements arrived after the Israeli army announced a shift. Here we go again with that word shift. From a defense to attack. From defense to attack. The Israeli Defense Force said another phase of preparations for war is taking place on the northern border with Lebanon. That's why they pulled these troops. Where it has spent months exchanging fire with Hezbollah. The statement came after the military said its war planes struck a group of Hezbollah's elite Radwan forces in uh, the Kaim area, several kilometers north of the Israeli held Golan Heights, where, by the way, Golan Heights, that's where Russia has their tanks positioned, as well as a command center near Tura, northeast, 
of the coastal city of Tyre. Earlier, Israel said it hit targets in that area. And I did, a, that's the video I did earlier this morning. In southern Lebanon in response to rockets fired into Golan Heights. So Emmanuel Navon, a professor of political science at Tel Aviv University, told Associated Press that a war in the north is unlikely to be avoided. Hezbollah leader Nas, uh, Hassan Nasrallah said in a televised address on Friday that his organization has not yet used his, listen to this, his, his organization has not yet used its main quote unquote weapons and retaliated and reiterated that Hezbollah will only stop its attacks when the war in Gaza ends. So they're talking nucle nuclear here. They're definitely talking nuclear here. So um, according to various sources, the United States and the Middle East, U.S. officials are trying hard to prevent Iranian retaliation against Israel. The Biden administration began pressuring Israel to sign a ceasefire agreement as soon as possible. That ain't going to happen. The U.S. also asked Oman to mediate with Iran. <laughs> you know what? This is hilarious. <laughs> the U.S. just asked Oman to mediate with Iran on behalf of the U.S. Are you for real? Iran has informed the U.S. that it will not respond to an airstrike that killed senior Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps commanders in Damascus if a ceasefire is reached in Gaza. Iran media reported on Sunday. The news agency cited an unnamed Arab diplomat source saying the source spoke to the news agency two days ago. The source added that if America manages to contain the situation, it will be a great success for the Biden administration and the two countries will be able to build other deals on top of that. The question now is whether Iran was bluffing in the first place that it would strike Israel directly with a ballistic missile and drones. America and other Western Secret Service were and are certain. But what will happen if, a real, if Israel does not accept the agreement? Well, hmm. well, hmm. when they pulled those troops, when Israel pulled those troops from Gaza, I knew something was up. Now, this says right here on an X, it says the Iranian government has reportedly delivered a message to the United States via Omen, which states they will not launch a direct retaliatory strike against Israel for Monday's airstrike on Iranian embassy, which resulted in whatever, if they manage to contain the situation. So see, now the U it's in the U.S.'s court now. Now the U.S. is... Now this administration has to stop Israel somehow or else all hell is going to break loose not only on Israel but on the U.S. as well. This is going to be interesting, very interesting to see what's going to happen here because it's like I said, it's, I, it's awfully ironic. No, it's a coincidence that this story happened to be posted today. Yeah, yeah, today. When the whole, when half of the United States is in a totality of a total eclipse. But that's a coincidence, right? Yeah, like Hal Turner just posted on his thing, nothing's going to happen today. It might not. But there is definitely a shifting in the spirit going on right now. I'm going to link this in the description box and I will be back later. Thank you.